In this video, I'm going to talk about the 2019 Mac Pro and the Afterburner card that they announced at the latest keynote. If you look at the 2019 Mac Pro, it has a cheese grater look to it, although I think this Mac Pro looks worse than the original cheese grater. The original cheese grater Mac Pro, you could at least put a DVD-ROM drive in it. This particular Mac Pro doesn't allow you to put a card reader or a DVD-ROM drive in it. So when they say it's modular, it's modular compared to what? The new Mac Pro does have PCI Express slots, but it also has a new batshit crazy contraption known as MPX modules. The MPX modules, I think, are what you're going to have to have in order to install a graphics card. In other words, I don't think you'll be able to install an RTX 2080 Ti in the new Mac Pro. I just don't think the computer will recognize a generic PCI Express graphics card. We won't know for sure until this product hits the market, but that's kind of my guess. I think you'll have generic PCI Express slots for RAID controller cards, video capture cards, maybe install another Thunderbolt 3 card, but I don't think you're going to be able to install generic graphics cards in this new Mac Pro. I say that because I think the Apple Corporation likes charging their customers for proprietary hardware. I don't consider these MPX modules from Apple to be state-of-the-art. In fact, I think Apple took the easy way out. I think for the size of these particular modules, they should be more powerful than what they actually are. It would have been more impressive if AMD could have produced a graphics card that only used about 65 watts of power. Then it could be powered by a generic PCI Express slot. That'd be the better way to go. It'd be great if it only used one PCI Express slot as well, but at the same time could play several layers of 4K and 8K video. I know that'd be a lot to ask from a graphics card, but that would be really cool engineering. If you notice, these MPX connectors do supply power that will eliminate the need to run a connector from your power supply into these MPX modules. I think Apple did this so they wouldn't have to have wires dangling in the computer case, which to me is just ridiculous. Who's going to see the inside of the Mac Pro computer? It's good to have PCI Express expansion slots. You never know what type of devices will come out in the future, and it's great to be able to just pop in that technology into one of the PCI Express slots. However, I think Apple has too many Express slots now. In other words, in that first PCI Express slot, let's suppose you could stick a generic RTX 2080 Ti in there. What are you going to fill up with those other PCI Express slots? I can imagine a RAID controller card, a fiber optic networking card maybe, you might even put in a video capture card or an additional Thunderbolt 3 card, but you'd be hard pressed to fill up all of those expansion slots. I think the generic ATX motherboard and generic ATX case is the way to go. You have seven expansion slots. If you run dual graphics cards and they take up two of the PCI Express slots, you still have three available expansion slots, which is more than most people are going to use. Apple would have been better off limiting the amount of expansion slots and allowing for hard drives or DVD-ROM drives to be added to this particular computer. Here we have the dimensions of the Mac Pro as well as the dimensions of my computer case. The Mac Pro is 20.8 inches tall. Mine is 14 inches tall. The Mac Pro is 17.7 inches in length. Mine is 16 inches in length. The Mac Pro is 8.58 inches in width, just a little over eight and a half inches, but mine is only seven inches width-wise. So mine's a lot more narrow, it's a little bit shorter, and it's not as tall. I'm not so worried about the size difference between the two computers. The one thing I want to point out is that with this Mac Pro, you don't have any expansion bays, you can't put internal hard drives in it, where with my computer case, I can put six internal hard drives in there if I want to. If I want to, I can put a DVD-ROM into my computer. I can also put hot swappable drive bays into my computer case. You can't do any of this with the Mac Pro. I know a lot of people are claiming the new 2019 Mac Pro is a modular system. 
And I'm asking, modular compared to what? You can't put a water cooling system in here. You can't add a DVD-ROM drive to it. You can't even add a card reader to it. How is this system modular? Sure, you have PCI Express slots, but it's going to cost you a minimum of $6,000 to buy the entry-level Mac Pro. It doesn't sound like a good bang for the buck. As a lot of people said, you're better off getting an iMac or an iMac Pro. Apple demonstrated their afterburner card playing back three video layers of ProRes at 8K. That may sound impressive until you realize this particular card will cost you $6,000. As far as I know, it only helps for playback of Apple's ProRes video codec. I don't think it'll help playback Red One, the Blackmagic Design, Camera Raw, Files, or even H.264. I want to say that for that price, they should have made it play back the Red One R3D files. The reason I say that is because people that own the Red One cameras would be the type of people that would have that type of money to spend. What I'm going to say is that it was cool to have real-time acceleration cards back in 1998 or even in 2001 when people were using standard definition because it was hard for like a Pentium 4 back in 2002 at 2.4 gigahertz to even do a simple picture in picture of standard definition. And if you're working with standard definition, you really don't want to watch that at half resolution. Whereas 1920 by 1080, if you watched it at half resolution, you're still getting something better than DVD quality. You know, if you watch 4K at half resolution, you're still getting a pretty good image. So you don't really need to watch 8K at full 8K. In fact, when Apple was doing their demonstration, they were playing back 8K on a 6K monitor, letting you know that you don't really need to see 8K at full resolution for it to look good. So I don't think these are going to go over all that well. Not like the real-time acceleration cards that they had back in 1998 and back in 2003. I also want to say for $6,000, this afterburner card should have a breakout box with XLR connectors, SDI connectors, BNC connectors. It should be able to do real-time playback from the Final Cut Pro timeline. It should be able to tap into broadcast-compliant equipment into a switcher or allow cameras to be connected directly into it. So I think they kind of missed the mark with this afterburner product. I don't think the 2019 Mac Pro is going to be a big selling item. I just don't think it will be because of the price point of $6,000. And the $6,000 system isn't all that powerful. Like a lot of people say, you'd be better off getting an iMac or an iMac Pro. As far as the afterburner card, for $6,000, it's really super pricey. Even if it was $1,600, I don't think it would sell all that well, just for the simple fact, like I said, you don't really need to see 8K at full 8K. You don't really even need to see 4K at full 4K, unless you're going out to broadcast live. But like I said, this acceleration card doesn't act like a video capture card. It doesn't have XLR, BNC, SDI, or any of those connectors for it. So I don't see how practical this afterburner card is really going to be to anybody. I should wrap this up by stating two years from now, Intel might have a 16-core processor for $450. AMD might have a 16-core processor for $350. I'm not saying for sure they'd play 8K back at full resolution. I'm saying they might. And I'm thinking NVIDIA will probably have an RTX 3080 Ti within two years. So I think these afterburner cards will become obsolete within like three or four years because the cpus and gpus will just be outperforming them and i would like to think this new batshit crazy gpu these you know modules that apple came up with i would like to think this would make this afterburner obsolete that will put an end to this video if you found this video helpful or informative don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel